of course, before you start doing your testing, check the meter's in good condition, check the batteries are charged, make sure the leads are in good condition, the probes are okay. And then we'll check the meter's working, see how I've connected the probes together. You clip to the bottom section of each clip, and you should get 0.00. .00. You're testing across the probes. Then separate the probes, press the button again. You should get an off the scale reading because there's obviously no passage of current. Just a quick one on the continuity setting as well. You notice when you put the clips together on the continuity, you'll get a reading of the value of the leads. You press your test button on my meter to null those out. Insulation resistance is a dead test. The initial verification is before the insulation is even energised. In periodic inspection, you have to make sure you carry out a safe isolation procedure before you do the testing. And it's really important that the installation is isolated because there might be some dismantling of circuits. And one of the tests is connecting live and neutral together and testing to earth. And you can imagine how dangerous it could be if you connect live and neutral together and it's still energised. So this is a safe isolation procedure. You should be very familiar with this. So anyway, the initial verification, I would suggest you do your testing at three points. Pre-install, during the install, and before energising. And the testing you do before energising, this will be the test information that will be recorded on your electrical installation certificate. So when I say before install, every new real cable I buy, I always test it before I start putting it in. You want to find out if there's an issue with it. Very rare that there is, but occasionally you do get a real that's damaging somewhere. So as you can see here in this demonstration, I've got a rather tatty old reel of cable. I've pulled out the little, little bit there, and made sure those conductors aren't touching, separate all them. And then it's just a simple process. Here I'm testing between neutral and CPC. Press the test button, obviously. Keep your finger on the test button for some time. Think of it like charging up a capacitor. Your cable is like a capacitor, really. Two conductors separated by an insulated layer. And you've got to give the meter a chance to work out what's going on. Then a test between neutral and line, live. Press the test button. And then finally a test between line and CPC. As you can see here, look at the reading. I'm getting around about 730 mega ohms, which is still an awful lot of resistance. But on a real new cable, You've got to expect off the scale readings. There's something wrong here. I wasn't expecting this. Reposition the leads, just check what's going on. And no, I'm still getting an issue. I'm still not getting a perfect result. And I was surprised by this. Then I looked at the cable reel end and I noticed there's a little nick on that little bit of cable there. And that was causing this low reading. I mean, that's a simple fix. You know, that's just the, that's a metal rim of the reel that's dug into the cable. Removing that, I got back to 999 mega ohms. So, a couple of seconds here, testing your reel of cable could potentially save you a lot of bother. And then I like to test throughout the installation process every step of the way, really. Once you get your cables in, do a test. And when other trades come in, plasters and such, do a test again, making sure nothing's been damaged. And then, of course, the final testing before the installation's energised. It's your cables that you're putting in the wall. Nobody's going to look after them better than you. So just keep an eye on them. It's so much easier to replace cables before the walls have been plastered and final finish has been done. OK, so your first fix is done. You've got the cables run. And this is a good time to test. The board hasn't been populated yet. We've just got the cable into the case of the board. We've got all the cable run from the fuse board to the various outlets. Next example, we've got a couple of lighting circuits, we've got an oven, we've got a boiler circuit, and we've got a socket circuit. In the consumer units, strip away a bit of cable. And in the back boxes, just check the cables aren't squashed. We can test the ring final circuits at the fuse board as long as we link them out. We can test the radiators like the boiler in the oven from the consumer unit. We haven't got the connection to the oven and the board yet. This is only first fix. And we can do the feeds to the lighting circuits from the board. But the two-way strappers and the feed to the light, you'd have to go to that local position to do your test in there. So they don't get missed out. With your ring final circuit, link it out. Those little lever wagons are quite handy. 
Test for the continuity, and then you can do your insulation resistance test on the ring final circuit. Of course, we've got no loads connected. We're just purely testing that the cable's been installed without any damage. Because we've got no loads, it's a really simple test. Again, we're putting 500 volts down it, so make sure nobody's working on the other end of the cable. And we don't have to worry about circuits being common together. And that makes this stage of testing really simple. Eventually, the neutrals will be commoned and the CPCs will be commoned. It's a really simple test. Put your clips on the line in the CPC. Press the test button. Go on to the line in neutral. Press the test button. And finally, CPC in neutral. Press your test button. And if you get perfect off the scale results, you know your cable's gone in without any damage. And you do that for each circuit. It's really simple. Make a note of it all. And when you come back in the future and test again, and you find some damage, you know that's not down to you. As mentioned before you do your insulation resistance test on your ring final circuit, you need to link it out and do the continuity test. I've got a separate video on that, but you should have your three loops. You'll have your line, neutral and CPC loops. And you know you've got your continuity. Then you can do your insulation resistance test with the knowledge that you are testing the entire ring final circuit, not just a leg of it. And now you know that it is continuous, you can just use one leg as it were. It just makes it a little bit easier than trying to get the two lives together, the two neutrals together, the two CPCs together. There's no problem doing that. Sometimes it's just easier getting in the connector block to do that. Line the CPC, line the neutral, neutral the CPC. And you'd be expecting perfect results. So if you test on the outgoing leg, remember the voltage will appear on the incoming leg. So make sure that's not touching anything and make sure you're not touching it as well. So we've finished our first fix, we've tested throughout the install. Now second fix has been finished. The installation's still isolated. We've got all the socket plates on, all the lighting in place. We've got all the switches on. Because we need to do our final insulation resistance testing when everything is in place to make sure nothing's been damaged as we screw the accessory plates on. So all the plates are on, but we've still got no loads. On cooker circuits you want to test up to the cooker connection plate, but you have to watch out for neons. We're just testing the fixed wiring, no loads. All our earthing and bonding is in place. So in the lighting circuits, all the lamps are removed. It's possible that you've got LED drivers, the dimmers. We'll go through that later. But at the moment this is just your lighting circuit with your standard switching. So nothing that can skew the results of your insulation resistance testing. And as you can see, it's starting to look a lot more complicated. We've got neutrals common together. All the CPCs are common together. The only thing that's independent and switch circuit-wise are your line conductors in each of the MCBs. Your main switch in the two RCDs, they double pole. They will isolate the neutral and the line connections. Let's have a chat about these neutrals first. It's often the neutrals that can cause problems when you're doing your installation resistance testing. That's because they're common together. A fault on one of the circuits could affect the others because it might make the RCD trip and you lose power to all the circuits powered by that RCD. The best way to do your installation resistance testing is to disconnect all the neutrals, but that can cause issue, especially on periodic testing. And there is concern about introducing faults when you dismantle circuits. In complex installations, I completely get that it's difficult to dismantle things. In most domestic situations, it's not too much of an issue. The issue seems to be more about time. Okay, so in this example, we've got three neutral bars. We've got the supply neutral bar, and we've got the two neutral bars which connect to the RCDs. So we've got two groups of circuits independent of each other, apart from the connections to the CPC. We're not connected to the supply neutral because either the installation has been isolated, or the supply hasn't even been installed. And at some point the neutral will be connected to the earthing system and when you're doing your testing you can pick up that neutral to CPC connection. I've added an extra MCB here so all three neutral bars are controlling circuits. In the previous example this neutral bar was just a common for the incoming neutral. This is one of the reasons why we need to have the installation isolated when we do our testing because there's a connection between the neutral and the means of earthing back at the transformer. Let's just follow this loop. We look at our clip on the CPC 
it goes down the mains of earthing back to the transformer which is connected to the neutral the neutral comes into the property through the main switch and onto this neutral bar here and if we're doing a test between this neutral bar and the CPCs here we're going to have a connection aren't we we're going to get pool installation resistance so we need to isolate the neutral so we don't get that situation we need to isolate the line so we're not testing anything that's live because that'll be dangerous. This neutral also goes through the RCD onto this neutral bar and this RCD onto this neutral bar. And also disconnecting a neutral on an energized circuit is extremely dangerous because that neutral will no longer be a neutral. It will just be an extension of the live conductor. Have a look on my video on shared neutrals, which will explain that. When we're doing our installation resistance testing, all we want to test is the cables and make sure that no voltage can appear on extraneous conductive parts, exposed conductive parts. So we don't need any supply. We don't want any incoming power, so we can get rid of all that. We don't want any connection to the transformer. Apart from the earthing system, we keep the earthing system in place, keep the earthing conductor. All bonding conductors, we keep all them. We don't want any electronic devices in the fuse board, like the RCD. If we want to get rid of that, we don't want to be testing that. We can't physically take these all out, but we can disconnect them. We don't want any loads, so we'll get rid of that. We don't want any neons, any neon sockets. We don't want any USB sockets, anything like that. So getting rid of any loads. All we want to be testing are the cables. So just to double clarify that last point, we don't physically remove main switches and RCDs and such. We switch off these devices to get isolation. Right, thanks for watching part two. Part three is about the actual testing and issues that can arise during the testing. <laughs>